One of my most encouraging parts of the entire day is when I get reports from the East Central Africa Division. I'm really encouraged as these reports come in and we see what God is doing. Let me share with you a few of the reports that have come in. Here is the Advent Hope Community Church in Laser Hill, and uh, it is an amazing site. It's a joint site with Angate Rago, and uh, here they are every night coming in to listen to the Word of God. So let's welcome tonight that Advent Hope Community Church at Laser Hill. Would you like to welcome them? Just wave your hand and welcome them. Every night they are there studying the Word of God. Here is the Mambara Adventist Church in Western Uganda. They have put the screens outside and every night they come. We pray that they don't get the rain like we got a few minutes ago here in Nairobi. But aren't you glad the rain has stopped so we can hear the word of God? Here is the Barrington University. They were very unique. They set up a screen at the gate for the community. So at the gate of the university, there is a screen set up so people can come and hear the word of God. Now the residents of uh, Kakwas in Eldoret are watching from a bus stop. So here's a bus stop. People come along to take the bus, they hear the word of God, and some of them are coming to Jesus. You know, we are getting reports from throughout the division. Tonight there are three reports that really encouraged me that came in from Uganda, Kenya, and Tanzania. In Uganda, there's a site called uh, Kabbalah, and uh, this site is a suburb of Kampala. Last night, when I made the appeal, 20 people came forward for baptism. They had been prepared for baptism, and uh, they will be baptized tomorrow. And then here's a site right here in the maximum security prison in Nairobi at Kemeti and 30 inmates gave their life to Christ and requested baptism. We call them now prisoners of hope because these prisoners may have their freedom taken away physically but they are free in Jesus and now they have hope. The Southern Tanzania Union, with headquarters in Dar es Salaam, have given us a report. They have baptized since this past Sabbath, since this meeting has begun, they've baptized 1,021 people in that one union. So we are just praising the Lord for the miracle working power of his grace during this series. Now every single night we have new guests coming and I've told you here about a book that really when I was becoming a Christian and studying the Bible really impacted my life. It's called The Great Controversy. If you're a guest or a visitor, not a member of this church here tonight, and you don't have a copy of this book and would like one, I'd like to give this to you as my personal gift. Now, I wish I could throw it in by the millions of copies and give it to everybody listening online or in their homes, but that's not possible. But if you're here tonight and you'd like a copy of The Great Controversy and you don't have one, just raise your hand. Our ushers have stacks of them. Anybody at this side not have one that you'd like? What about in the center or the side? Just lift up your hand. The ushers will see you. Some hands are coming up and they will put one in your hands. As we open the Word of God, although we have prayed already in our series, I always like to ask for the anointing of the Holy Spirit. So let's pray. Father in heaven, we thank you with all of our hearts for Jesus. We thank you that although we live in a world where there are challenges and suffering and heartache, 
We thank you that Jesus is coming again. And as we study about that space journey that we will take when Christ comes, help our hearts to be filled with hope. In Christ's name, amen. Now here in Africa, we have different modes of transportation. Some of us in villages ride a horse to get places. Others of us may ride a donkey. Many of us in Africa ride on motorcycles. How many of you own a motorcycle here tonight? How many own a motorcycle? Okay, a number of you do. Wait, wait, if you, if you hear me. How many of you travel by minibus? Anybody travel by minibus here? Sure. How many travel by large buses? We travel by different ways, don't we? Some by horse, some by donkey, some by motorcycle, some by minibus, some by larger buses. Some of us travel by cars. Others of us travel by airplane. We travel by airplane to get here. However you have traveled, I've got incredible good news for you. You are going to take a remarkable space journey where you do not need a donkey, you do not need a horse, you do not need a motorcycle, you do not need a, a minibus, you do not need a jet airplane with wings, and the price will even be affordable. One day, when Jesus comes, we will take an incredible journey beyond the stars. We'll travel thousands of miles through space beyond the moon. We'll travel beyond the planets of Saturn and Pluto and Mars and Jupiter. Think of the amazing views we're going to have as we travel through space. We'll travel with Jesus and the angels, travel through that empty space in Orion, travel to the throne of God and the doors of heaven, the golden gates of glory will be opened and the angels will be singing and as we enter those gates we will be welcomed home forever. I am looking for that incredible space journey, aren't you? Aren't you looking for that space journey? Because Jesus said, John 14, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there you may be also. Jesus didn't say, perhaps I will return. Jesus didn't say, hope for my return. Jesus didn't say, it's highly likely I'll return. Think about it. Jesus said, I will come again. 1,500 places in the Bible the Bible talks about the coming of Christ, the second coming of Christ. For every prophecy in the Old Testament about the first coming of Christ, there are eight about the second coming of Christ. In fact, Enoch, the seventh from Adam, said, Our Lord comes with 10,000 of his saints. In Psalm 50, verse 3, the Bible says, Our Lord will come and not keep silence. You remember throughout the New Testament, promise after promise of the second coming of Christ. God's end time plan is revealed in his word. The first book of the Bible, Genesis, begins with a perfect world. And the last book of the Bible, Revelation, ends with a perfect world. Revelation talks about Jesus. The central theme of the book of Revelation is not beasts, it's not mystic symbols, it's not strange creatures, but the theme of the book of Revelation is Jesus. The Jesus that came the first time and the Jesus that will come the second time. The book of Revelation features the second coming of Christ. And here, Revelation describes Christ coming in glory, Christ coming in power, Christ coming in majesty. Revelation chapter 14 ends with these words. John says, Then I looked, and behold a white cloud, and on the cloud one sat like the Son of Man. Who's the Son of Man, everybody? Who is that? Talk to me tonight. Who's the Son of Man? 
Jesus Christ. John says, I looked, I saw, I gazed. John looked up in heaven and he saw the coming of Christ. He said that Jesus has on his head a golden crown. The crown indicates triumph. The crown indicates victory. The crown indicates kingly authority. And in his hand, a sharp sickle. The sickle is to reap the harvest. The harvest of the earth is ripe. Revelation 14 talks about two harvests. The harvest of golden grain and the harvest of gory grapes. In the harvest of grain, the righteous are welcome to the city of God. But in the grapes, they are tread out in the winepress of God's wrath. Men and women, saved or lost when Jesus comes. No second chance. Revelation 14 says that Christ is going to come in triumph and victory, the golden crown. He's going to come with the sickle to reap the harvest of the earth. Every decision has been made. The Bible says, Revelation 22, verse 11 and 12, He that is righteous, let him be righteous still. He that is holy, let him be holy still. He that is unholy, let him be unholy still. He that is filthy, let him be filthy still. See, Jesus does not need to give us a second chance when he comes because he gives us a thousand chances in this life. Every night, Christ's word is coming out to you. Every night, the Holy Spirit is touching your heart. Every night, God gives every single one of us a chance to surrender our lives to him, a chance to give up any habit in our life that's not in harmony with his will, an opportunity to be fully committed to Christ. The book of Revelation speaks about the second coming of Christ. Revelation chapter 19, John looks up and he says, Now I saw in heaven opened, and behold, a white horse. And he who sat on him was called faithful and true, and in righteousness he judges and makes war. The conflict between Christ and Satan will be over. Christ will come. Evil will be judged. Jesus will make war against wickedness, against injustice, against poverty, against sickness, against suffering, against death. He'll make war against all those things that the evil one has thrust upon the human race. And the Bible says the armies of heaven clothed in fine linen, white and clean, followed him on white horses. Now, a white horse is a symbol of purity, victory, and triumph. When a Roman general conquered the enemy in a faraway land, that Roman general would ride back to Rome on a white horse, symbolizing his victory. Behind him would come his armies with their white horses, and they would come with the captives that they had taken and the treasures that they had taken in that land. So John takes a symbol from ancient Rome, and he says, when Christ comes, he comes triumphant, he comes victorious, he comes like a general riding on a white horse, he comes with the captives of earth. The graves have been opened. The righteous have been resurrected. They've gotten glorious immortal bodies. The righteous living with their immortal bodies have been caught up in the air. They have been released from the captivity of this earth. The chains that have bound them are gone. They travel through space to enter into those golden gates to hear the sound of our Savior. Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Enter in to the joy of our Lord. Revelation chapter 11, verse 15. You see, the point I want you to see is revelation is all about Jesus. It's all about the return of Jesus. This is to give us hope. Hope in our days of struggle and difficulty on earth. Revelation chapter 11, verse 15. 15, 16, the kingdoms of this world have begun the kingdoms of our Lord and of his Christ, and he shall reign forever and ever. There is hope for Africa, hope for today, 
tomorrow and forever. Pliny, the Roman statement said, statesman, said this. The famous historian Pliny said, Hope is the pillar that holds up the world. One psychologist put it this way, We can bear anything today if we know that there is hope for tomorrow. We have the greatest hope in going through poverty tonight. Not knowing where your Christ is with you today, he will never leave you or forsake you. He will provide your need. But you have a hope beyond this life, a hope for tomorrow, a hope for a society where there is no poverty. You may be suffering. Your body may be writhing in pain. Cancer may have taken away all hope for deliverance in this life. But you can look beyond that pain, look beyond that suffering, and you can know that there's hope for tomorrow because one day the kingdoms of this world will fade into insignificance. One day the earth will shake. One day the lightning will flash. One day Jesus will say, it's closing time, and Christ will stream down the corridor of the sky. But how will Jesus come back the second time? And how can I know that I'll be ready when he comes? Two very important questions. How will Christ return? Will he return secretly? Some people believe in the idea of a secret rapture where the righteous are kind of whisked away and the wicked are left on earth for a while. How will Jesus come? But as important as that question is, is the second question. How can I be sure? How can I be certain that I can be ready when he comes? Let's explore both of those questions. First, according to Scripture, Christ's coming will be a literal event. It's not simply, as some teach, Christ coming to the heart to set up a kingdom of grace on earth for a thousand years. Not at all. The Bible says in Acts chapter 1, verse 11, this same Jesus. You remember the disciples were with Christ. And as the disciples were with Jesus, they watched. And Jesus lifted up his hands. Man steps off a mountain and goes down. Christ steps off a mountain and goes up. Because the, the laws of gravity cannot keep the creator of gravity down. And as Jesus ascends, he ascends higher. And there's Bethlehem where he was born. And he ascends higher. And there's Nazareth where his hometown was. And he ascends higher. And there's the Sea of Galilee upon which he walked. He ascends higher. And there's the mountain where he broke the bread and fed 5,000. He ascends higher. And there's Pilate's judgment hall. He ascends higher. And he sees Calvary's mountain and the broken fragments of the cross. He ascends higher. And soon he's out of sight of earth and inside of heaven. And all the angels sing, Jesus Christ is coming home. But one day, the angels stood beside the disciples as they strained with their necks gazing into heaven. And these angels say, this same Jesus who's been taken up from you into heaven shall so come in like manner as you've seen him go up into heaven. So this is not some make-believe Jesus that's coming. This is not some mystical Jesus that simply comes into our heart. This is a very real Christ who comes. He ascended in the clouds. He will descend in the clouds. He ascended with the angels. He will descend with the angels. The Christ that walked the streets of Galilee. The Christ that walked the cobblestone streets of Jerusalem. The Jesus that touched eyes of the blind and they were open. Touched the ears of the deaf and they were unstopped that touched the withered man's arm and it was healed, that touched legs and they ran again, that touched children and they were healed. Is Jesus real? Ask the blind man and he will tell you. Is Jesus real? Ask the deaf man and he will tell you. Ask the lame man who's running through the streets of Jerusalem. Now, if you can catch him, ask him 
and he will tell you, this Christ who came once will come again with his glorious, resurrected, immortal body, and he will come to take us home. A real Jesus ascended, and a real Christ will descend. Now, Christ's coming also will be a visible event. The Bible says, Behold, he's coming in clouds, Revelation 1, verse 7. And every eye will see him. How many eyes are going to see him? Talk back to me tonight. How many eyes are going to see him? A few eyes are going to see him. Uh, just the righteous eyes are going to see him. What does the Bible say? How many eyes are going to see him, church? Every eyes are going to see him. Will American eyes see him? And Asian eyes see him? And European eyes see him? And uh, will... Will, will African eyes see him come? Will Kenyan eyes see him come? Will Ugandan eyes see him come? Will, will Tanzanian eyes see him come? Behold, he is coming with clouds. And how many are going to see him come? Every eye is going to see him come. Christ's coming will not only be a literal event, it'll not only be an audible event, uh, and a visible event, it'll be an audible event. Christ's coming will be louder than the rain pounding on the roof right now. Christ's coming will be louder than the thunder in the sky. Christ, you see, God always provides sound effects when I'm preaching to help illustrate the sermon. So, Christ's coming will be an audible event. My Bible says, 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 16, the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a what, everybody? With a what? With a what, everybody? With a what, everybody? Shout. The Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout. With the voice of the archangel and the trumpet of God will sound. Now notice what the Bible says. The dead in Christ are going to rise first. The trumpet of God will sound. When God sounds a trumpet, it's louder than the rain on our roof. Every human being will hear that trumpet sound. Every human being will hear it. There will be no silence. Men and women will be raised from the dead. The righteous dead will come forth. The trumpet indicates that Christ's coming is an event that every human being will hear. The Bible says in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 17, Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. So shall we ever be with the Lord. So the Bible says that when Christ comes, the righteous dead are resurrected. The righteous living and the righteous dead are caught up with glorious immortal bodies to ascend to heaven with Christ. That loved one that was a faithful to Jesus that you laid in the grave, you can see them again. There is hope. There's hope for that father that you've laid in the grave. Hope for that mother that you've laid in the grave. Hope for that son, that daughter. You brought them to Sabbath school. They were killed instantly in a car accident or some disease took them from you. You still remember the tears in your eyes at the funeral. You still remember the pain in your heart. But when Jesus comes again, that son that daughter faithful to Christ, that husband faithful to Christ, that wife faithful to Christ, one day you'll see the smile on their face again. One day you'll see the sparkle in their eyes again. One day you'll feel that warm embrace again. One day, hand in hand, you'll ascend through the clouds with Jesus again. One day, Christ will come. The dead will be resurrected. Now, Christ's coming also will be a very glorious event. The Bible says 
in Matthew 24, verse 27, for as lightning comes from the east and flashes to the west, so also will be the coming of the Son of Man. Lightning comes, flashes across the sky from the east to the west in glory, in splendor. And here, as that lightning flashes, the Bible says Christ's coming is a literal event. Christ's coming is a visible event. Christ's coming is an audible event. Christ's coming is a glorious event. We see the splendor, the glory of his coming. In fact, in Matthew 16, verse 27, it says Christ comes in the glory of his angels. Now, the real Christ is coming in the sky. The real Christ is coming to resurrect the dead. Now, the Bible says in Revelation, the 12th chapter, that before the real Christ comes, a counterfeit Christ will come. If you have your Bible, take it and turn to Revelation chapter 12. Revelation, the 12th chapter. Why is it so important to understand how Christ is going to come? Notice what it says in Revelation chapter 12. And we're going to look there at Revelation chapter 12, verse 12. Revelation chapter 12, verse 12. Therefore rejoice, O heavens, and you who dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and sea, for the devil has come down to you, having great wrath, knowing he has a short time. Now notice, Christ's kingdom will last forever. But the devil has a short time. The closer we get to the coming of Christ, the more the devil will be furious and he will want to deceive multitudes. That's why in the book of Corinthians, 2 Corinthians chapter 11, the Bible says that the devil has transformed himself into an angel of what? Into an angel of what? Light. When Jesus comes, every eye can see it. When Jesus comes, every ear can hear it. When Jesus comes, he calls forth the dead from their graves. When Jesus comes, the dead are resurrected to receive their immortal bodies. When Jesus comes, the righteous living are transformed. The devil cannot do that. The devil cannot imitate the second coming of Christ. The devil cannot come in the heavens with glory. The devil cannot call the dead from their graves. The devil cannot make everybody see him the de when he comes. But the devil can come as an angel of light. What if the devil appeared in Dar es Salaam as an angel of light? What if millions or thousands were supposedly healed? What if the devil appeared in a great stadium as an angel of light? in Nairobi. And what if he said, the commandments of God are done away with. Come and be healed. Why is it so important to understand how Jesus is going to come, that, that he's, a real Christ is coming? He's not the make-believe Christ. A real Christ is coming. Why is it important to understand he's coming in the clouds of heaven so that every eye can see him? Why is it important to understand that every ear will hear him, that he'll raise the dead when he's coming? Why is it important to understand that Jesus said, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again to receive you to myself. Jesus did not say he would come to walk on the earth as a miraculous healer. He is not coming at that point to be where we are. He's coming to take us where he is. Therefore, not some secret rapture, not some miracle healer coming to the earth. He is coming through the clouds of heaven. He is coming to take us where he is. We are soon to take the greatest space journey in the history of the universe traveling through outer space 
in our immortal bodies, we won't even need a space suit because our space suit will be the glorious immortal bodies that Christ has given us. You know, I'm sure there are people listening to our broadcast, and maybe some here. You've never flown on an airplane before. Never been up in the sky on an airplane. I'm going to tell you something. You are going to have something better than an airplane in your glorious immortal body. You're going to take a space trip that's farther than America, farther than Australia. You're going to take a space ship past the moon, past the sun, right to the throne of God. I do not want to miss that space journey. What about you? I didn't hear you. What about you? I don't want to miss that space journey. Now, Christ's coming is going to be a climactic event as well. Because the Bible says in Matthew chapter 24, verse 30, the Son of Man will appear in heaven, and all the tribes of the earth will mourn. Who are the tribes of the earth? The tribes of the earth are, un are the unsaved. The tribes of the earth are the lost. The tribes of the earth who are mourning when Christ comes. They're running for the rocks in the mountains to fall on them. This Jesus that wants to save them, they've never known him in this life. He's not sat on the throne of their hearts. Selfishness has sat there. Pride has sat there. Sin has sat there. Rebellion has sat there. They didn't know Christ in this life, and they don't know him when he comes. And when he comes in glory, they run. They cry for the rocks and the mountains to fall on them. It says they will see. Now, who is it that sees? This verse destroys the falsehood of the rapture. It says the Son of Man will appear in, in heaven, and then all the tribes of the earth will mourn. That is the unsaved. The rapture theology says only the righteous see him coming. But my Bible says every eye sees him coming. My Bible says all the tribes of the earth, the unsaved, they will see the Son of Man coming in the cause of heaven with power and glory. Every eye will see him. The wicked see him and they cry out in agony. They know that they're lost. Their hearts are filled with fear. Their hearts are filled with sadness. They run for the rocks and mountains to fall. On. Here is the divine truth. Every single one of us in this room tonight, everybody listening on Hope Channel, YouTube, everybody listening on Adventist World Radio, every single one of us, that day when Jesus comes, are either going to look up with joy and gladness and be caught up in the sky to live with him forever. Or we're going to run for the rocks and mountains to fall on us and say, hide us from him. What a tragedy that will be. Not one man, one woman, one child need be lost. Every single one of us can look up when he comes. Jesus says this in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 51 to 54. Behold, I'll tell you a mystery. If you die before my coming, we'll not all sleep. See, death is but a sleep, a rest till he comes. And Jesus says, but we shall be changed in a moment in the twinkling of an eye at the last trump. You see, if you die before Christ's coming and you're in Christ, it's just a moment. And when you're resurrected, you're resurrected for the joy of seeing him come, the joy of seeing the glory and the splendor of heaven, the joy of having new life flow through your veins. And it says, for the trumpet will sound, the dead will be raised incorruptible, we shall be changed, no more pain, no more suffering, no more heartache, no more sorrow, no more disappointment, no more poverty, no more war, no more disease, no more sickness, no more death. For the corruptible must put in incorruption. The mortal must put on immortality. We have mortal bodies. Our knees ache, we get old. Our backs ache, I can tell you about that. Um, our backs ache when we get, we get older. 
you know an age, you know, know what a sign is when you're getting old? When you bend down to tie your shoe and you ask the question, what else can I do when I'm down here? You know, you, 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 some people know that's why they laughed. You see, but one day, this corruptible body, this body that is decaying, as Paul says, we hold this treasure in earthen vessels. But Paul also says, although the outward man is being destroyed day by day, the inward man is being renewed by the grace of God. This corruptible may put on incorruption. This mortal will put on immortality. One day Jesus will come. We're dead resurrected in immortal bodies, the righteous living in immortal bodies. Now what happens when Jesus comes? First, there'll be seismic upheavals. What does that mean? Simply it means the earth is going to be shaking with earthquake. Second, the righteous dead will be raised. The devil could never do that. Third, the righteous living will be changed. The devil could never do that. Fourth, we will have immortality bestowed upon us. The devil could never do that. Fifthly, the wicked living will be destroyed by the brightness of Christ's coming. Sixth, the righteous will welcome Christ and ascend to heaven with him. And together we'll travel through the sky. But somebody says, but is it, what about that secret rapture? Isn't there a text in the Bible that says Christ is going to come as a thief? Yes, there is. Let's look at that text. The Bible says in Matthew chapter 24, but of the day and hour no one knows not even the angels of heaven but my father only now notice the emphasis the day and the hour but know this that if the master of the house had known what what's the next word after what in the text look at it what is it what what hour the thief would come he would have watched and not allowed his house to be broken into Look, this passage is not talking about how Jesus comes, the manner of his coming, but the time of his coming. It says, if the thief had known the time, if the master of the house had known the time the thief was coming, then he would have been ready. So Jesus is coming literally. He's coming visibly. Every eye will see him. He's coming audibly. Every ear will hear it. He's coming gloriously in the clouds of heaven. It's a climactic coming when Christ comes. The dead will be raised. The righteous dead will be raised. The righteous living will be caught up in the sky. So he comes visibly, audibly, etc. But he comes quickly, unexpectedly as a thief. For example, I don't know how the thieves in Nairobi work, but let's suppose you left your door unlocked and you were coming to the meeting at night and it was two o'clock in the afternoon and let's suppose there were thieves in the neighborhood and they went like this when you're at that meeting tonight I'm gonna come and rob your house I'm coming at seven o'clock to rob your house I'm coming at nine o'clock to rob your house do the thieves in Kenya announce the time of their coming to rob your house is that the way they do it here they're just very kind thieves. They're thieves, but they're kind thieves. So these kind thieves announce the time they're going to come. Is that the way they do it in Uganda? What about Tanzania? What about Rwanda? What about Democratic Congo and the DRC, Democratic Republic of Congo? Is that the way they do it? Do they? Not at all. Not at all. You see, a thief must come unexpectedly. Jesus is coming to this world when the majority of this world does not expect it. When Jesus comes as a thief, the world will not expect his coming. That's why Jesus says in Matthew 24, Therefore be also ready, for the Son of Man is coming at a what? Hour that you don't expect it. The only way to be ready for the coming of Christ is to get ready and to stay ready. You will never be ready in the future unless you make an eternal decision now to be ready because the Bible says in 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 10, but of the day 
but the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in which the heavens will pass away with great noise, nothing secret about it, and the elements will melt with fervent heat, but the earth and the works therein will be burned up. So when Christ comes, the wicked will be destroyed by the brightness of his coming. The second coming of Christ will be a surprise to the unprepared. Christ's coming will be literal, visible, audible, glorious, climactic, and joyous. We will look up to see him. And in Matthew 25, verse 9, it says, We will say, Behold, this is our God. We have waited for him. We've not been deceived by the false Christ and false prophets. We've not been deceived as Satan appears as an angel of light, masquerading as Christ. Behold, this is our God. He's coming in the clouds of heaven. This is our God. He's coming gloriously with 10,000 angels. This is our God. We have not been deceived. We have not taken the mark of the beast. We have been faithful to Christ. We have kept the commandments of God. We've been saved by the grace of Christ. We have waited for him. He will save us. This is the Lord. We have waited for him. We will be glad and rejoice in his salvation. We're not running for the rocks and mountains to fall on us. Our husband is coming to take his bride home. We are filled with joy and gladness. We cry out, Revelation, great and marvelous are your works, Lord God Almighty. Just and true are your ways, O Lord of the saints. As Christ comes, he calls, Mary, come forth. Peter, come forth. John, come forth. We see, our, if we're alive, we, we see our dead loved ones. They're resurrected. We're reunited again. One night, I was preaching in the Midwest of America. And I thought to myself, how can I make the second coming of Christ real? How can I make the resurrection real? And I thought in my mind as I was preaching, maybe I can just tell an imaginary story. So I said this. I said, suppose, Mama, you had a little six-month-old baby. It was your first child. You embraced the baby and loved it so dearly. One night, you didn't hear the baby whimpering and crying for its food. You went to the little bed. The baby had pulled the blanket over the bed, Mama, and the baby had suffocated and died, and you saw it there all blue. And you just wept and wept. You called the doctor. Nothing could be done. And let's suppose your baby's name was Amanda. I had never used that name in a sermon before. Never. It just came to my mind. I was trying to make it real. And I was saying, suppose. And suppose, Mama, you, you took that little baby and it was buried in a little coffin. And every day you brought flowers to the coffin, uh, to the grave. And you went there and you knelt by the grave weeping. But one day, Mama, you're by that grave. And one day the earth shakes. And one day the sky is illuminated with the glory of God. And one day 10,000 times 10,000 angels come. And one day a glorious angel cries, Amanda, come forth. And your little baby comes out of that grave with new life. And, and you see the smile on her face and the joy in her eyes. And you feel those little hands hugging you. And together with glorious immortal bodies, you ascend to heaven, Mama. At the end of that meeting, a crowd was around me. A woman broke through the crowd and said, Pastor, could we personally talk? Yes, certainly. Pastor, how did you know? How did I know what? Pastor, how did you know? How did you know that I had a little baby called Amanda? How did you know, Pastor, that my baby died at six months in the crib? I said, I did not know. But God knew. And God knew you were in the audience. And God knew you needed hope. And she said, Pastor, I was so discouraged. I was so depressed. But tonight, I have hope. I can see my child again. There is hope for Africa. Death is not the end. And God says to you, be you also ready 
For an hour you think not the Son of Man is going to come. 2 Corinthians 6 verse 2 says, Behold, now is the accepted time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. Our eternal destiny depends on the choices we are making today. Would you like to see your loved ones again? Would you like to be reunited with those that have died? Would you like to one day receive a glorious immortal body and ascend with heaven into heaven with Christ? If that is your desire, wherever you are tonight, I want you to stand. If your desire is to ascend to be with Christ, if your decision tonight is to be with Him, you may be in Uganda tonight in a little village. Stand. You may be in a, by a bus stop tonight, but the Spirit of God speaks to you in some day in eternity. You're going to hug me and say, Pastor, thank you for making that appeal. I made my decision at the bus stop. Somebody tonight in Tanzania is going to make a decision for Christ. Somebody in a Muslim land is going to make a decision for Christ. Somebody tonight in West Kenya, East Kenya is going to make a decision decision for Christ. Somebody in Kigali is going to make a decision for Christ. Somebody in Rwanda. Somebody in DRC. Somebody in Burundi tonight. Somebody in Etaria tonight. Somebody in Sudan tonight. Somebody tonight is going to make a decision for Christ Jesus our Lord tonight. Is there something in your heart that would keep you from being ready for Jesus to come. And you just want to surrender that thing to Him. You may be here in this audience, you may not be here, but you know that if Christ came tonight, you would not be ready for His coming. He speaks to your heart tonight. Our eternal destiny is based on our choices. There's something in your heart and you want to say, Jesus, I'm lifting my hand. I'm surrendering that thing to you. Just lift your hand now. If you want to make a full surrender to Christ, we see these hands all over. Yes, God bless you. Tonight, I'm going to make a special appeal. If there is some habit in your life that would keep you from being ready for the coming of Christ, if you just don't have in your heart that sense that you're ready, but you want to make a full commitment to Christ tonight. Wherever you are, come to the screen. If you're here, you come. A specific appeal for somebody who says, I need the assurance. I need the assurance that I'll be ready for Jesus coming. I need the security. I want you to come. There may be here those that have never walked through the water of baptism you want to go under the water. The Bible says, he that believes and is baptized will be saved. Don't wait. Make that decision tonight. There may be those here who once knew Christ but drifted away. You want to be rebaptized. You come. So three groups I'm inviting to come tonight. One, those that need assurance that don't have it. That you want to just lay everything down. Secondly, those that want to be baptized. Thirdly, those that drifted away. There's something between you and Christ. Wherever you are watching, you come. Pastor, you come and make the appeal in, again, Swahili. I'm going to come down and meet you as you come. Just come in the Spirit of God speak to your heart just begin to come God will touch your heart if you need that assurance if you need prayer tonight if you need prayer you just come right here little one come here you can come here others are coming you just come Jesus is calling tonight for eternal decisions for Christ. He is calling tonight. Unaweza ukaja sasa Bwana anapokuita. Makundi matatu muhimu yameitwa. 
yeyote ambao unasema nahitaji kwa hakika kwa wangu Yesu akija niende mbinguni Sogea hapa mbele nasema nataka kupata uhakika wa wokovu wangu Yesu anakuja lakini nasikia moyoni kama sina uhakika nahitaji nipate uhakika jo lakini kuni la pili unaweza ukasema kwamba mimi nahitaji kubatizwa katika mikutano hii na wewe njo sogea hapa mbele naomba uje hapa mbele lakini inawezekana unapitia jambo fulani gumu katika maisha yako unatamani kuombewa ili uweze kulishinda lisikuzuie kwenda mbinguni na wewe njo hapa mbele maombi maalum yapo kwa ajili yako nasema kuna jambo nahitaji Yesu anisaidie ili niweze kulishinda lisinizuie kwenda mbinguni ni jambo ambalo ni wewe na Mungu mnanifahamu njo hapa mbele hakuna mtu anayelijua ni wewe na Mungu njo hapa mbele kuna maombi maalum kwa ajili yako sogea sogea hapa mbele sasa popote ulipo na kuna kadi iko hapo pokea kadi unayopewa utaandika jina lako na nyuma yake hiyo kadi unaweza ukaandika pia maombi yako unayohitaji kuombewa wale mnaoangalia kwa njia television kuna QR code itakuwa hapo kwenye TV yako scan hiyo QR code utapata ile kadi ili uweze kujaza sogea sogea huku mbele sasa sogea huku mbele na ni vizuri mkasimama mwangalie huku mhubiri alipo inakuwa ni vizuri zaidi I want to appeal to our satellite sites that may not understand Swahili. Tonight I'm speaking to you. Wherever you are tonight. This is decision night. Thousands of people are making their decision across Africa to follow Jesus. They're making decisions at bus stops, making decisions out in fields, making decisions in churches. I want to appeal to those of you that are watching at home. You can kneel in your house and make this decision. A decision that you want to be ready for the coming of Christ. You can in your home take the hand of your wife, your husband, your children, gather around that television and make a commitment to be ready. There may be some son watching with his mom or dad that's not ready. God speaking to you. There may be some daughter that's not yet baptized. God speaking to you. God is touching your heart tonight. God is speaking to you tonight. Make your decision in your home tonight. Call us on the phone on our number. Fill out the response card online. We've had over 100 people fill out those response cards online in addition to the hundreds of others. Tonight we're going to pray. Father in heaven, you have seen these young people and others who have come forward here at this church, at the New Life Church. Every night hundreds are coming forward. Every night we sense the power of God through East Central Africa Division. Every night throughout Africa we see that God is working. And Father, tonight I lift those up to you who have come. Oh my Father, hold them in your hands. Embrace them. Help them to know that they're your children. Help them to know that whatever has been holding them back, that tonight the chains are broken. The prison house is open. Help them to know that they're free in Jesus. Be you because you have said and the son shall make you free and you shall be free indeed lord as we look forward to our baptism on september 16 there'll be hundreds thousands that walk through the water oh lord thank you for the cleansing wave the symbol that we are new in christ keep us safe until that day in jesus name amen